What's cracking YouTube? It's your boy back again with another reaction. I got a recommended video from uh Dylan Anderson and Mickey's G. They wanted me to react to Justin Verlander's Impossible Inning, a study in velocity. Velo I said velocity. It's velocity and spin rate. Baseball bit. You know what I'm saying? But before we get into this, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We three subscribers away from 875 subscribers, man. Let's go. Ooh, throwback. Press start. What would a perfect inning look like from a pitcher's perspective? Some would say three quick pitches, three quick outs. Others would point to an immaculate inning, which is nine consecutive strikes to sit down the side. The latter feat has only been accomplished 93 times in MLB history, but it's becoming increasingly common due to rising strikeout rates. Swing and a miss, strike three. He swung at a high fastball out of the strike zone, up and away. And Pedro Martinez, for the fourth time this year, K's the side, and this time he does it on nine pitches. 2017 alone, a record eight pitchers recorded immaculate innings. To put that into perspective, it took nearly 30 years for the first eight immaculate innings to be tossed. That being said, the inning I'm talking about today is from Justin Verlander, who I will argue tossed the finest inning ever pitched in an otherwise nondescript Detroit Tigers loss to the Cleveland Indians in May of 2012. It doesn't fit the three pitches, three outs criteria, nor is it an immaculate inning. It's 11 pitches in total, two of which were balls, but all of which were fueled by white hot rage. So how can I argue that Justin Verlander's inning was the most dominant? Watching the film of it alone might convince you, but once we dig further into the data, we'll find that Verlander's inning wasn't just impeccable, it was impossible. I promise you that I can prove it, but you need to give me the time to explain some terminology. Otherwise, things could get complicated. If you want to just skip to the first pitch, go to the time listed. This nah. is a triple-digit fastball in the eighth inning. This is a spin rate that melts faces. This is a curveball that breaks bones. Jesus this is Christ. Justin Verlander's impossible inning. We're going to listen to it. I ain't going to skip. Spin rate. Spin rate? Spin rate, spin rate, spin rate. Spin rate is baseball's new buzzword ever since the introduction of StatCast in 2015. By looking at a pitcher's spin rate on his four-seam fastball, front offices have surmised that they can explain why some 95 mph fastballs are just plain juicy, while others are nigh unhittable. In fact, this chart in front of you now shows that spin rate has a higher correlation to swing and miss stuff than straight velocity. So what does a good spin rate look like? The league average is about 2300 RPM, or rotations per minute, this glorious metric can also be improved, as baseball's mad scientist Trevor Bauer, emphasis on mad, has added an extra 100 rotations per mad scientist Trevor Bauer, emphasis on mad, has added an okay. extra 100 rotations per minute to his fastball since 2016. As for Justin Verlander, it should be no surprise that the introduction of Statcast spin rate revealed that his is elite. I think one of the joys of spin rate is how easily it explains why great pitchers simply are great pitchers. Verlander's 2018 featured an average 2,618 RPM spin rate on his four-seamer, which was mm. first among starting pitchers. Now you see why Kate Upton loves him. And while Verlander has seen spin rate increases since he joined Houston, his was always elite to begin with in Detroit. Okay, we're almost halfway through the brief history, so I just want to reiterate, if you stick with me, I will show you someone pitching so well that it's actually impossible, okay? I just need a little more time. Okay. <laughs> So how can I know that Verlander's spin rate was already great in Detroit? Remember, Verlander's impossible inning was tossed in 2012, three years before StatCast tracking began. Well, before StatCast, there was PitchFX. PitchFX measured velocity the same way that StatCast does, but didn't officially track spin rate. However, PitchFX did use a crude but effective formula to estimate the spin rate of individual pitches. You see, the spin that is put on four-seam fastballs is backspin, which causes the ball to fight against the downward forces of gravity. This is where the term rising fastball comes from. The ball doesn't actually rise, but it does descend slower with this backspin than it would in a vacuum. Thus, more spin is equivalent to more rise. And when I say rise, I'm doing finger quotes. You can't see those, but rise, finger quotes. Uh, anyways, here's a graph of Verlander's vertical movement against a fourth inning Indians batter on that fateful day in May of 2012. You can see that he's getting about 10 inches of this so-called vertical movement on his four-seamer, labeled in the black, whereas his curveball, labeled in yellow, drops about 7 inches. When you have pitches that end up 10 inches higher or 7 inches lower than they should in a vacuum and they're coming from the same release point, 
you can see how frustrating that could be for hitters. Even in 2012, pre-StatCast, Verlander was doing this as well as anybody in baseball. Fatality. Hmm. So, by taking the vertical movement and pitch velocity into account, PitchFX can spit out a pretty good spin rate estimation for us. In Verlander's fourth inning, we can see a fastball spin rate in the 2400 RPM range, with an outlier towards 2100. This isn't StatCast, but PitchFX's spin rate estimate is crucial to contextualize what 2012 Verlander did. We're effectively using 2018 analytics to look at something from 2012. In fact, I'll be putting up the estimated spin rate for each Verlander pitch as it's thrown over the course of the video. Of course, this chart is from the fourth inning. Justin Verlander's impossible inning came later in the game. Yes, it was the eighth and final inning of Justin Verlander's start that was the most dominant inning ever thrown. And now that we understand what will happen from a technical perspective, I just want to sum up what Verlander is feeling from an emotional perspective. He's pissed. Royally pissed. He's so pissed that the commentators know it. He's so pissed that the YouTube video of this inning is simply titled, Not Happy JV. The Tigers are trailing 2-1, and Verlander is entering this inning knowing that it's his last, meaning that he will get saddled with a no decision at best. Jacob deGrom faced similar situations multiple times in 2018, but 2012 Verlander will not be keeping his cool. Despite having thrown 106 pitches already, he's going to come out firing like no pitcher ever has before, or since. Your first batter to the plate is Shin Su Chu, a very productive hitter and 2018 All-Star with the Rangers. He would finish with an impressive 3.6 B-War in 2012, but couldn't do anything to help his team win in this particular plate appearance. Lloyd, who is the acting manager here today, feels like this is the best opportunity for the Tigers to win this game. Swing and a miss by Chu. Verlander's first pitch is, as expected, a four-seam fastball. It goes right down the middle at 96 miles per hour, which is backed up by both the radar gun and pitch FX, but Chu swings and misses. Why is that? How about a cool 2,746 RPM spin rate? If we refer to our previous chart, that puts this pitch squarely in the red, which I will now refer to as Whiff City. Now let's load pitch number two. So taking over after Leland was ejected, swing and a miss again. Verlander rears back and launches another four-seamer, this time just a tad higher, but still well in the strike zone. Chu swings and misses again. I, I'm sorry I got to pause it, but I, he, I'm going back to what he said. He said the average was 2,280. The average spin, spin rate. This dude is about almost putting up 2,800 spin rate, so you know he's going crazy. This one comes in at 97 miles per hour, which is already significantly faster than Verlander's average fastball velocity, which was 94.9 in 2012. Did I mention that this is pitch number 108 for him on the day? He's just getting loosened up. Oh, and that's 108. If he inches. breaks 2,800 RPM, he'll be off the chart. He's now on the outskirts of Whiff City. Two. Almost hit him. 2,977 rotations per minute. I just checked the chart, and well, we're well into uncharted territory now. That shit's ridiculous. Only three pitchers, all of them relievers, managed to throw at least two four-seam fastballs with a higher spin rate than this in all of 2018. One of them was Josh Hader. And even then, none of them threw as hard as Verlander on this pitch, which registered 99 on the gun and just over 100 on my pitch FX spreadsheet. I don't even care that it's a ball. The pitch is just absurd. In fact, dare I say, impossible. And I say this to reiterate, there's no direct measurement that can tell us this fastball is actually a 3000 RPM aberration. But the pitch absolutely behaves as one in terms of its velocity and rising action. The hitter certainly won't know the difference. Speaking of hitter, I've had enough of Shin Su Chu. I think Verlander would agree. Brought a lot of energy to that spot. Got him. Verlander sits down his first batsman with another heater, this time back down to a 2600 RPM spin rate. This places him squarely back in Whiff City, and Chu does just that on this pitch right out of the zone. <laughs> Golly! Kipnis Aberdeen. Now it's time for our next victim, or I mean hitter, Jason Kipnis, another good player. He would deliver a stellar 3.9 B-War season in 2012 before making his first All-Star game in 2013. And Verlander already has strike one on him. He delivers this one at 98 once again, and with an eerily similar spin rate. 
In fact, that 2,618 represents his average spin rate in the year 2018. This will, of course, leave us firmly entrenched in Whiff City. Now we're on to pitch number six of the inning, <laughs> number City. 112 of the afternoon. Swing and a miss. Yep, that's the 100 mile per hour barrier being firmly broken. Pitch number three might have done it, but pitch number six definitely did, with pitch effects and the stadium radar gun both flashing triple digits. At this point, our beloved commentators have picked up on the fact that they are witnessing something special, and that it's all being fueled by Verlander's rage. Verlander not happy. Bro, bro he's going he's faster than the high than a car on the highway, bro. That's crazy. Miles an hour on that last fastball. Hey, do you want to know how many starting pitchers have hit triple digits in the eighth inning or later since 2008? Thanks to Baseball Savant, I can tell you. It's six pitchers, starting with Luis Severino, who did it once, Garrett Cole, who did it twice, Noah Syndergaard and Nathan Eovaldi, who have each done it thrice, followed by James Paxton, who has done it a whopping four times, and then finally, it's Justin Verlander, who has done it. What? Whoa, Justin. Where does he rank as a, as a pitcher in baseball? Because from what he said, and from the outside looking in, because uh, y'all know baseball ain't my sport. This dude sound crazy. When you breaking down the physics to this, this is ridiculous, bro. I gotta know. Save something for the rest of us. Mm. Is that back to back? Not just gushing over 100, and he drops 101 on us like it's nothing. Hey, do you want to know how many starting pitchers have thrown 101 miles per hour in the 8th inning or later since, I don't know, 2008 again? Only one. It's Justin Verlander, and he's done it 16 times. Only Justin Verlander can do this. Justin Verlander, you are impossible. And Jason Kipnis, you are out. This brings up our third, and as you may have guessed, final hitter of Justin Verlander's impossible inning. Cabrera needs now, aloe vera. Cabrera was an all-star in 2012. He, ah, who cares? I want to see what Verlander <laughs> does next. Bam! 100 miles per hour strike. The third time he has broken triple digits this inning. His spin rate is well over 2,700. Cabrera doesn't stand a chance and doesn't even offer at the pitch. I just want to see if he can get back up to 101 again. Minnesota Twins are tuned into this game about right now. Because they play tonight. That's a slow ball. Oh. That's a oh, slow one to oh. him. Oh, it's not what I expected at all, but I'm still super into it. Whew. After all that fastball fanfare, Verlander throws both a figurative and literal curveball. We don't have to look at the velocity or spin rate to know it was filthy, but you can see from the strike zone plot just how well located it was. The fastballs are unhittable as is, but once you introduce this curveball into the mix, Verlander ascends to another level in this at-bat. It doesn't matter that he's facing good hitters. It doesn't matter that all of them are left-handed and thus hold the platoon advantage. He has set out to embarrass them. They can't even foul these pitches off, and now he's going to follow up this nasty curve with a life-affirming heater. Enjoy yourself in Minnesota, Verlander. The 0-2. Mm. 102. I told you he's angry. Bro, he is going nuts. 102. I gotta tell you guys, I've said about 2,000 words in this video, and only now am I at a complete loss for them. It's just beyond the pale. For someone to throw 102 miles per hour on their 116th pitch of an outing should be impossible, and to have it somehow be forgotten or become a footnote is frustrating for me. Honestly, how many of you were aware of this inning and this particular feat before watching this video? Not me. Let me know in the comments, but I think I'm showing you something somewhat esoteric. It's like I've seen a UFO in person, and I'm desperately presenting someone the grainy footage in the hopes that they'll validate my sighting. That's what watching Justin Verlander pitch in this <gasps> eighth inning makes me feel like. It's as if my entire reality has been broken. How can this be possible? I'm convinced that there's only one other pitcher in baseball history who could have possibly matched this feat, and it's Nolan Ryan, who we have no such data for. But for Justin Verlander to do it, and for it to be backed up by both pitch effects and the stadium radar gun, is soul crushing in a way. Like I said, he's pissed. He's giving it his all, and it just won't matter. The Detroit Tigers will lose this game, and Verlander, having surrendered two runs earlier, will take the loss. The 2012 Tigers, fronted by eventual Cy Young winners like Verlander, Scherzer, and Porcello, with an offense led by Triple Crown winner Miguel Cabrera and slugger Prince Fielder, will battle their way to the World Series only to get swept by the San Francisco Giants. 
This Tigers core never won a championship, and it will take Verlander moving to Houston after 13 years in Detroit to ultimately acquire a ring. Wow. In a way, the entire thing is a gross injustice. But the legacy of this inning lives on, and I'm happy to be the one to finally immortalize it. This series of three batters, which occurred on May 24, 2012, in the eighth inning of a regular season game against the Indians that few actually cared about, is the finest inning ever thrown. And that was Justin Verlander's impossible inning. Wait, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I actually, I forgot to show you guys the last pitch. Wouldn't want to be Cabrera right now. That's why. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Wow. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. That video was cold. Oh my God. Bro. Oh my goodness, bruh. That is ridiculous. That, bro. I've never watched a baseball bill, but, I, bruh, that was, bruh. That was, this was a good, shout out to Dylan. And shout out to Mickey's Jeep, bruh. This is, bro, I was entertained, bruh. No cap. This was, bro, this was a good video. Shout out to uh Baseball Bits, too. This was a, bro, a Round of applause, man. Everybody give him a round of applause. That's a fucking W video, man. God. That, that was amazing, man. But YouTube, I'm out of here. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Comment other videos I should watch next. And I'm going to catch y'all on the flip, man.